Histamine, histamine in the QA protocol. Well, allergies and histamine affect central neurotransmission and cognitive function. So we look at the histamine levels when we're looking at step six, and we look at the substances sometimes in step six that help to break histamine down, which are B6 and folic acid, and other antihistamine substances that are available, including things like quercetin. So excess histamine can be related to depression and other emotional responses and should be addressed prior to focusing on emotional recall techniques. So like I told you about the patient that came into my office after eating the, the uh, hot peppers that she was allergic to and the blackened fish, um, this patient would have gone somewhere else. They would have recommended that they do some emotional recall techniques or they would have recommended, that, depending what office she went to, they take a tranquilizer, but the problem was histamine or antidepressant or something, but the problem was histamine. So it has, we address the histamine levels in step six before we do emotional stressors because it clears a lot of things out. Is there like a characteristic of histamine depression? Is that kind of crashing like that? A, a, a characteristic histamine depression. It can be just be chronic depression, which is going on in the background all the time because the person's got a chronic level of histamine, either because they're chronically eating something they're allergic to, or maybe they just have a, a histadelic patient that can't break histamine down. And this is where you look at B6 and folic acid and the diamine oxidase product that's only been available for a recent time, and this is a possibility. More often, I see the histamine reaction um, is on patients that it causes acute flare-up of it because, well, because the patients I'm seeing are mostly patients who are well under control because I've seen them for a while, and then they have an acute episode. But patients can come in with a part of their depression being chronic histamine reaction from something they've been eating for 20 years and they don't even realize it, and it can, it can create that as well. I just happen to see it more in the acute thing. That's why I talked about that one. But yeah, it can do that. So the effects of histamine on cortical projections on sleep and arousal. Antihistamine drugs, or histamine receptor blockers, can produce sleep. Did he, I'm sorry. Okay. So the destruction of histamine-releasing, HA is the abbreviation for histamine, histamine-releasing neurons, or inhibition of histamine synthesis leads to the inability to maintain vigilance. Histamine neurons are the most wakefulness-related firing uh, of any neuronal type. So the histamine neurons are part of wakefulness. You can take antihistamines that put you to sleep. They're the most wakefulness-related firing pattern of any neural type. So we have issues with histamine and sleep as well. They're normally arousal neurons. Sexual effects of histamine, libido and erection, H2 receptor blockers. There are H1 receptors and H2 receptors. H2 receptor blockers can interfere. Cimetidine, tagamet, ranadine, pepsid AC, risperidone, risperidol. These are all H2 receptor blockers, as you recognize some of these as blocking H2 receptors in the stomach to decrease hydrochloric acid. People take these sometimes over the counter now. You know, tagamet used to be the largest selling drug in the country. And then what happened is it came around, finally, that the research came out of Australia, I forget the guy's name, that found out that most ulcers weren't from excess stomach acid, but were from H. pylori infections. And overnight, the bottom dropped out of the tagamet market. So guess what happened the next year? All of a sudden, it became over the counter. And a new disease. Well, of course, then we had to develop, like you always have to develop new diseases for drugs so you have a reason to give them, right? Sometimes there's validity to that, sometimes not. Excess histamine causes a hypersensitivity in the genitalia to the point of pain, dyspareunia, or aversion to sexual activity. So I ask the question on patients' form, do you have any sexually related problems? It's a question we've had on our history form since I worked in Goodhart's office. People sometimes don't answer it or they lie, but if they do answer it, we give them the opportunity to talk about it because a lot of patients have extraordinary sensitivity, male or female genitalia, during the sexual activity, and it's almost the point of pain It's so excessive. And therefore, they don't feel comfortable having intercourse. So those patients always have too much histamine. And you find out what the source of it is, usually an allergy. Sometimes you need to break the histamine down. And all of a sudden, their genitalia becomes more reasonable in its response level. So um, that's a thing that's useful to know.